Lennox Lewis, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder are underdeveloped. The former undisputed king of the division believes the pair's lack of amateur experience means they cannot be lined up alongside other eras yet. And Lewis also reckons the sports wants glamour division is currently a lackluster one. Current IBF and WBA champion Joshua won Olympic gold and world amateur silver before turning pro in 2013 but only started boxing at 18. While WBC title holder Wilder was also a late starter at 19 in 2005 before he won bronze at the Beijing Olympics in 2008 and then turned professional in the same year. He has now racked up 38 wins in as many fights ahead of his latest defense against Bermain Stivern on Saturday in New York. Both fighters had limited experience at elite senior level in the amateur ranks despite their exceptional success before turning pro. There's been a lot of talk recently about historical comparisons of heavyweights of older generations to heavyweights of the new generation, Lewis said on his official website. I've been asked on many occasions where I stand on this debate, my perspective is that more experience in amateur bouts makes for a more seasoned and skilled professional. It's not my intention to knock or take away from any of today's fighters, nor is it my intention to overly glorify fighters of the past. When you look at the state of today's heavyweight division you have a group of young up-and-coming talent who are basically still learning and perfecting their craft at the championship level. Yeah, it adds excitement to the division, but I still haven't seen what I would call the clear-cut last man standing. It feels like the state of the division has a lot of underdeveloped champions that must now learn on the job. The talent in the division isn't what it used to be, but the playing field is much more level than any time in the last 10 years. This adds excitement to a lackluster division as we wait to see who becomes the last man standing. If there will be one at all but we are a long way from making historical comparisons. Let's wait to see who's really been taking notes among the current heavyweight crop. Don't be surprised that it might not be the one you think. Lewis spent much longer in the unpaid ranks than the division's top two stars today winning a world junior title in 1983 before representing Canada at the 1984 Olympics. He lost to eventual gold medalist Tyrell Biggs in the quarterfinals before winning gold himself at super heavyweight four years later at the Seoul Games. The British boxing icon said, most of the top heavyweight fighters today don't come from a pedigree that has a long amateur career. If you look at Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, both competed in the Olympics and won medals, but they also didn't have extensive amateur careers to build up on before turning pro. What they did have was amateur success in the form of gold and bronze medals. Generally, these are things that translate into launching pads for professional careers and it's no different in the case of Joshua and Wilder. I used my success in the 1988 Olympics to do the same. However, my setbacks in the 1984 Olympics, caused me to step back and re-evaluate, and I chose to hone my skills further as an amateur, 
pursuing that gold medal ticket for another four years. As I progressed in my amateur career, I picked up a ton of valuable experience that would pay dividends for me as a pro. Along that road, the Olympic gold medal became my only goal. I vowed to get back to the Olympics and win it in 88. As an amateur, I was a pugilist. When I turned pro, I became the pugilist specialist by specifically preparing for each fighter I faced. My extensive amateur experience showed me how to face and deal with any type of opponent. I fought over 90 plus amateur fights. Evander Holyfield fought over 160. It's not a coincidence that we were the best of our generation. By comparison, Joshua, Wilder and Tyson Fury each had about 50 or less total amateur bouts. Amateur pedigree makes a difference because this is where you hone your craft. You learn to face different styles and different physical types of fighters. You also learn these things as a pro, but with a limited amateur background you have to be more cautious in the pros because you haven't learned some of the tricks of the trade. You have to be more concerned as you don't want to get too far ahead, or stay too underdeveloped, as you make your way up, knowing one loss can derail a fast-moving career.